That man right there is an American hero. His name, Lieutenant Colonel Harry Stewart. He took on enemy fighters as a Tuskegee pilot during World War II. He survived 43 combat missions, and it's all detailed in a brand new book out now called Soaring to Glory. We are honored to have Lieutenant Colonel Stewart join us in the studio. Thank you. Colonel, Thank a you real very pleasure. Much. It's Thank an you. honor to have you. Good morning. What do you want to tell people about your time as one of the Tuskegee Airmen? Well, I guess the book is uh, inspirational, number one, and uh, I would like it to be uh, an attraction for youth uh, of the nation to follow their dreams. And uh, number two, it's historical. It has to do with African Americans in uh, uh, aviation, and this takes uh, mm -hmm. in the period during uh, uh, just prior to World War II. Tell us about how rare that was during World War II. That was very rare because uh, uh, just before then, uh, African Americans were not accepted uh, for pilot training into the Army Air Corps. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until World War II that they were accepted, and only under the condition that they would train as a segregated unit. I know that when you turned 18, your dream was to be a fighter pilot. Yes. And the fact that you were accepted was another dream come true. Absolutely. Tell us about your first mission as one of the Tuskegee Airmen. Well, the first mission was uh, uh, a large mission that took place in, uh, from Foggia, Italy, into uh, northern Europe. And uh, it involved something like five or 600 bombers, B-24s, and B-17s, and their fighter escort. Yeah. And it was just this huge armada of these. There were 10 men in every bomber that was flying there, so it was a huge armada that was flying up into Europe there as a concentrated effort by the American war machine at the time. You know, as the president is in Europe this week for the 75th anniversary yes. of D-Day, yes. it must all come back to you right now. Yes, it does. It does. And uh, I've been reliving a lot of the... Uh, of past events in World War II recently as a result of this book, of course, and some of the other interviews that I've had. What was it like when the Tuskegee Airmen came back home after the war? Well, it was the same old, same old. You know, it was about the same as it was before we went uh, uh, into World War II and uh, overseas there. Recognition was long coming, and it didn't start coming until maybe in the 1970s. and. Uh, uh, it's still coming along now. Indeed. Uh, I know you are about to celebrate your 70, uh, rather your 95th birthday. July 4th. Congratulations. Thank you. You make your home now in Michigan. In Michigan, Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. When you, ca when you came back, uh, what did you do with your life? Uh, well, first I tried to get into the uh, airlines as a pilot, but they were not accepting African Americans as applicants for the flying at the time there. That came later on for some other more fortunate individuals there. But uh, I had a uh, backup plan, and that was to go to school. I went to New York University and got my degree in mechanical engineering and worked my way up the corporate ladder. Well, and now you're an author at age uh, 95. The brand new book is yes. called Soaring to Glory, a Tuskegee Airmen's first-hand account of World War II. Yes. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel, Thank it you. is such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome.